You need to be in that Hall of Fame, man. Well, listen, man, I tell you what. You need I'm, to be I'm, in that I'm Hall not, of Fame. I'm not one of those guys that's going to show up on a TV show and be on it for years and years until somebody put me on the thing. And I say it to this. I say it like this, and it's you and me. If they decide they don't want to put me in, it's shame on them. If you put Zach Thomas on, 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 on my team when I was playing, he would have never made our team. Zach Thomas would have never made Pittsburgh Steelers team. He would never Ain't nothing made wrong it. with saying, hey, hey. He would, he, never, he would never made it. And half of these guys that are playing right now. They wouldn't have made on. it. They wouldn't have made our team. They would never made our team. These guys, they're calling great this and that and that. They would have never made our team. You might have already answered, but, and, and I feel like you may have, but I want to give you the opportunity to answer it. I ask every legend, what what do you want your legacy to be? When people speak on you long after you cease to exist here, what is it that you wanted your legacy to linger on? What is it that you wanted people to say about Greg Lloyd? Well, I'm going to say this. When it comes to linebackers, and especially Steelers linebackers, but when it comes to linebackers in general, when they start speaking to linebackers in the NFL, if my, main, if my name doesn't get mentioned, then I didn't do my job. That's how I feel. So you got to do your job so well. I tried to do that job so well. The work's been done. Can't undo it. But when you start talking about linebackers and, you know, especially linebackers of the past, I mean, at some point I was number one, number two, or number three linebacker, you know, in the 90s. You're talking about DT and Seau, you know, mm -hmm. at that point. And, um, you know, depends on who's writing the magazine or who was talking or who was a fan, you know, you're one, two, or three. And in my head, I've always thought I was one. You know, I've always thought I was one. I very was very good friends with my two deceased, you know, buddies, uh, Derek Thomas and, and, uh, and, and Junior say, oh, it's like, you know, all my great friends, it's like they all passed away, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and my boy 9 1. So, no competition. It was just that I did things different because, again, they had the opportunity to rush every down where I got a, I got a cover. Mm -hmm. I got a cover. I was cover linebacker. But I would want people to think that, you know what, uh, a legacy for Greg Lloyd would be, you know, he gave you everything on every down. And you know, don't 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 line up in front of him and 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 and, um, and not be ready to play because he'll embarrass you, you know, kind of thing. So my legacy, you know, you going back to Steelers and stuff like that. When they start talking Steeler linebackers, when your name gets mentioned with Jack Lambert's and your name gets mentioned with, you know, uh, 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 Jack, there, go, go Jack, put ham on it. Go ahead, put that yeah, pin starter up in there. Well, I got to do it. I got to do it. Well, name, <laughs> I, I call him ham. I got to call him Hammer. When your name gets mentioned with Hammer and your name is mentioned with, you know, you know, uh, all, all the all, all the great linebackers that came through there. When your name gets mentioned with those guys, man, I mean, that 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 in itself is a is a Pittsburgh legacy. But mm -hmm. a, a legacy throughout the league. I know when I was playing, like I said, I played against and with some great guys. And, you know, I think all of us at some point, there was nobody that I thought that was better than me, you know. And I never put myself out there to be better than anybody, but I played that way. And I played that way because of this, because that's where I went to school at. And I had to keep proving to people that, yes, it's an HBCU, a historically black college. We play football, but guess what? We're not on television, but we got this. And if yeah. you put us, and if you put us somewhere in a forest, somewhere in the woods and you drop us off, oh, we coming out. Mm -hmm. We're coming out with food for everybody. We're coming out. We're going to come out with food. For so that's what I wanted to do. And, and I think that's I think that's what I did. You know, so leaving a legacy of, of, of Fort Valley, a legacy of Fort Valley State College, a legacy of linebackers, and then a legacy of, hey, listen, in the 90s, man, we had so many great linebackers, man. But to be in that, always in that top three, I think I think that 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 does it for me. So, you know, for me, man, that's just, you know, there they ain't but one other thing that they can honor me with, you know, uh, they need if they had so if they have social media are you in the hall of fame oh five years ten years ago ten years ago right you know because again you're no different like like they i look at how they talk about aaron donald right yeah right 
and how he's quiet. Yeah. But I mean, you got to believe you got to believe the DNA of how Aaron Donald is and how he does things and how he moves is he's a descendant of the brain of Greg Lloyd. We all are. We all, we all are. Right. Right. Cause you see it when he loses, it, he loses. it. You oh know? yeah. When he loses, it, I was the same way when he loses, it, he loses. it. But see, again, like I say, I think social media is a great thing for, and it's a great tool to be used, you know, in its proper place. And I just think that if we abuse it, if we take it and we say, and you have the wrong people saying, see, LeVar Arrington, you can say, that guy right there is a great player. Why? You played the game. You understand. You played against great players. You were a great player. You played against great players. You've been on the team with great players. So you understand what that word great player means. It shouldn't, come, it shouldn't come out of your mouth like go brush your teeth. It shouldn't, right. come, out, it shouldn't come out of your mouth like that. And so mm-hmm. my thing of it is because – a guy made a good play in a game, you know. Maybe it was a great play. <laughs> but my, that does not equate to great player. It does not great equate to a, a, a career of being a great player. It was right. a great play. It was, right. you know, it may have been a great play. He had a great play. But see, my thing was this right here. And I and I say this, and I know you got to go. No, no. I'm, I, say, hey, listen, I, I, I say this to my – I'm being mindful of you. I used to say this to the guys when I, I coached in Tampa with Raheem Morris, the head coach. I coached in Tampa. I had to coach linebacker. Mm-hmm. I used to tell linebackers all the time, you want to be in this league? Here's what you got to do. Every day in practice and in every game, there's two plays that you got to make, and then there's two plays you ain't got no freaking business making. So if you can make four plays, two plays that you know in practice, you know how they script them out in practice. They script a the play at you. They script a the play at me because they know that they like to run this play and then you got something funky that you do and you need to be able to get this read. So, boom, here come the play, LeVar, boom, you made the play, okay. So, LeVar's got that. It ain't over with because they're going to probably give it to you again. But come, mm-hmm. in, come game, you made the play in practice. Now, come game, you see that, boom, you make the play, boom, all right, LeVar got that. But then there's also two plays that you got no business making. That's when you mm-hmm. take that tight end, throw him down, hit that fullback, reach out there and grab that guard and then reach around and grab that guy. They go, God damn. The uh-huh. bar took on the tight end. The fullback came down, hit him with his shoulder, reached over, grabbed the guard, and then yeah. tackled the guy. Well, what happened. were the other fuckers doing? What were mm-hmm. all the other fuckers doing? That's that's your guy. One, two, that's three more. That's three guys. That's three. That's three guys. What the Somebody fuck free. What were they doing? What were they doing? Right. And you made the right. play. Great play. You see what I'm saying? Right. That's a great play. You know, and you make one more like that. So you don't make two plays. You got you know got no business making, and you don't make two, two plays. More. I mean. What team and you got to do that every you. week. You got to do, do that every week. Weekend, That's the definition of greatness. You got to do it all the, the time. Week in and week out. I'm not talking about a guy shows up for one season and then the next season you go, well, is he still in the league? Who's he playing with? They say, oh, no, mm-hmm. he's still playing for the same team. He's like, well, shit, I ain't heard nothing about him this year because he thought his shit didn't stink last year. And then this year he didn't go and do – he didn't go put the work in because he mm-hmm. figured that one year would get him a contract. Did you realize guys now – Five five sacks, that's considered a great season? Yes. Yes. Don't you laugh at that shit? Yes. That was a fucking joke in our day, bro. Yes. That was a joke in our day, you know? But five sacks. Guys go five sacks Solid and go, year. oh, man, you know, he's got now. We're going to give him $70 million. <laughs> I go, you got to be fucking kidding me. But right. they couldn't afford us. They couldn't afford us. You think they could afford me, Kevin Green, LeVon Kirkland, Chad Brown, Rod Woodson, Carnell Lake, mm. and Joel Steed, and, and all, mm. they couldn't afford us. Mm. They couldn't afford to keep us all together. But the way we played the game, we opened the doors for these guys. And I don't want anybody yeah. who see this to think that we're hating. It's just that it's a respect thing. It's a respect thing. And, I, and I'm going to say this, and if I see him, he don't like it, it's whatever. I had a, I had a recently, back in May, beginning of May, me, Levon, Chad, we was, this, we was in Pittsburgh. Me, Levon, yeah. Chad, I, Morovia Mall. And then yeah. we, were doing, we were doing an autograph session. Guy brought us in, and um, I walked in, and Hammer was already signing, and, and uh, Franco was on the end. So mm-hmm. before I start signing, I got to go down and give homage respect. to my elders. So sure. I go down, I hug Franco, stop what he's doing. I come back over and I hug Hammer. And what he's doing, we have a little chit-chat. 
and then I sit down. Okay. So Levon did the same thing. Chad did the same thing. Number 90 comes out. He sits down in the chair and he signs and he gets up and leaves. Mm. And I, I almost lost it, bro. Mm. I almost lost it. Mm. I almost fucking lost. I don't give a fuck if you are the defensive player. I don't give a fuck if you had 30 sacks. These guys paved the way. Wow. And so, so, so it pissed me off right then and there. And I was like, it's that generation. See, they it's different. that generation. These they dudes just different. different these days, they just, man. It's that generation. So he might I, not even been aware of how he, offensive he, what he did, what he no didn't clue. do. What he didn't do. But but see, they think it's our job to go and say, hey, how you doing? Like, you ain't did shit we didn't do. Man, you know how alarming that is? Like, like this to someone like me, I'm running up to y'all. Yes, yes. Yes. And I didn't even play yes. for the Steelers. Right, absolutely. But see, I'm, I'm that way. running to y'all. I used to say, man, I used to be in a room with Joe Green and Mel and Donnie Shell and mm. Franco. And mm. they got John Colby in there. Even got Bradshaw in there. And we sitting mm. there at a golf tournament. And they talking too. I'm, I'm the, I'm the, I'm, I'm the this guy in the room. You feel me? Yes. All the stuff that we talking about now, everybody know what I did. But I'm the this guy in that room. And okay and, and with I'm, being and, that guy in that moment. What? What? Right. Do you want me to go get you some wine? I'll go get you right. some wine. I'll go get you all a drink. Y'all sit down. I got that. You know, because when you're comfortable with who you are and what you've done, I'm not, I don't have no, I got no competition. They've got one for a Super Bowl, but That's they right. were dominant. They went, they didn't just win for a Super Bowl. They beat people's ass. They beat them up. Yeah, and I ain't talking about up. just, just, just in playing football. I'm talking about in the fighting and all. They just beat people's ass. So <laughs> I, I, I love that about them, bro. And so when I right. sit and hear them talk, I would get goosebumps. And I was like a little kid just sitting there going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like tell some more, talk some more. But it's like, I'm not going to say nothing in that group. What am I going to say? Right. What am I going to say? What am I going to say in that group? Nothing. And I just sit there and I listen to them. Devin Hester is Barry Sanders, Hall of Famer. Yep. Brian Mitchell is Jerome Bettis. Okay. Hall, Hall of Famer. Famer. I didn't dance around. I ran through you. You ran through him. Okay. I I I, <laughs> I went out with a concussion, hitting this hard hitted, big headed man of a man. I and just, so, I just yeah, yeah, you I did just, run through dudes. I just think it's different people and there's different ways to get this thing done, but the problem is, you know, if the voters. You know, they, people worry about saying something to the voters. I'll say something directly to them. You can't just be in your town and watch your players and not know the history of football. Welcome into another, you got it, exciting edition of Up On Game Presents Conversations with a Legend. I really, truly, and indeed have a legend here with me today. If you don't know, you better ask somebody. And if they don't know, then you need to slap their mama <laughs> and tell them that they ain't do a good job raising you as a child. Because Brian Mitchell is indeed a legend. Appreciate you, man. I appreciate you coming on oh, the show. No problem. No problem. Conversations with a legend. Obviously, my whole my whole movement here is to bring a voice and 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 put it out there for people to hear what our legends of the game have done what they've been through the mindset of all of it with you it's it's interesting because this one is a personal this one is a personal i guess ad let's call this an ad all right <laughs> we're going to put an ad out this is an advertisement for the simple fact that they're going to announce another class of Hall of Famers here soon. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest travesties in the history of sports is that Brian Mitchell is not a finalist and already in the Hall of Fame, the Pro Football mm -hmm. Hall of Fame. So this one here is, is pretty important to me. Let's just start there. Let's, let's start right there. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are, are and, and I don't like it to be an either or situation or scenario. I never look for it to be that because yeah. I respect what we've all done. Oh, yeah. But if we're using comparisons, if we're going to compare, 
There are a lot of people that are anticipating that Devin Hester is going to get that call, if yeah. not this year, fairly soon. Yeah. Which I think he should. Again. Yeah. <laughs> I think he should, too. Yeah, yeah. But don't – doesn't B. Mitch have more Super Bowls than than Dan? Yeah, I mean – hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I said this is the LeVar ad. Yeah, you got it in a minute, but this is LeVar ad right now. Doesn't Brian Mitchell have almost uh, an entire career's worth more of yards and return yards in the league yeah. than death? How are you being overlooked? Well, I was talking to someone earlier today, and they were talking about the football team I played on and the things we did, where a lot of guys came into the NFL, and it was very much like Prime. And, you know, Prime is one of those generational talents. Mm -hmm. But they promoted themselves. I just played football. You know, I felt that me doing what I'm supposed to do consistently at a high level, that's promotion enough. Uh -huh. You know, and then Dev came in, and Dev is very much I, I, my my comparison is, Devin Hester is Barry Sanders, Hall of Famer. Yep. Brian Mitchell is Jerome Bettis. Okay. Hall, Hall of, of Famer. Famer. I didn't dance around. I ran through yeah. You ran through him. Okay. I I I, <laughs> I went out with a concussion, hitting this hard hitted, big headed but, man of a man. I and just so, I just yeah, yeah you I did just, run through dudes. I just think it's different people and there's different ways to get this thing done. But the problem is, you know, if the voters, you know, they, people worry about saying something to the voters. I'll say something directly to them. You can't just be in your town and watch your players and not know the history of football. Every record that Devin Hester broke, and a lot of them he hasn't gotten close to, are mine. They're not for Dion. They're not for Dante Hall. They're not for all these other guys. They were mine. So... This is like Art Monk when he left the game. He owned everything. And they took all and that took time to play. 13 him years in. for him. So my whole thing is that, you know, we, we can't sit up here and act as if a guy hadn't done something. I put my, my resume out there, and I know people like to say, well, kickoff return, punt return, you got some yards in it. Okay. A lot of people have done it. Most of them are in nowhere in the stratosphere, okay? Jerry Rice got more yards. He touched the ball more often. He played six more years. You have to just look at the position. And if a guy is at the top of that game, he's in. Yeah. It's not about – and I, people get to a point where I, you go compare my stats to a quarterback stat, it doesn't make a difference. If you compare my stats to all returners – You're the best. I have a bust. Probably a big head one. You know it's, a big, it's a big, big but, one. But it is. But the whole thing is, like, I've gotten to the point now where, you know, in my – older, mature years, I don't sit there and argue. Yeah. I don't argue about it. You know, my whole thing is you look at those stats and you keep – they keep having guys, they popping up names. And I look at the 100 uh, – when they came up with the top 100 players for the Super Bowl. I talked to Billy White Shoes Johnson. Billy White Shoes Johnson told me I was supposed to be there. But you know what? People like certain names. I, didn't, I wore white shoes all the time, so mine weren't special. Right. Okay, I didn't dance around. <laughs> Right. But a hundred yard touchdown is a hundred yard touchdown. I don't care if you dance all over the field; you just go straight away. Correct. You know, I ran twenty three thousand. I did twenty three thousand three hundred and thirty yards. I probably did twenty three thousand three hundred thirty yards. Some guys probably have nineteen thousand yards, and they probably ran thirty five thousand yards. Right. Makes them better than me. I doubt it. It doesn't. It doesn't. And then you're you're you are someone that not only did you put in the work and get those yards. But you had longevity. One, somebody told me, I think it was Jesse Armstead that told me, good is being, being good in the moment. Nobody knew you were good. Mm -hmm. You did some things that were special. He's good. Yeah. Great is when they know you good. Now, always, I changed it. I changed it up. But I told my son, this is good. Good is, is if you could get to the table and get food off the table. And they say, oh, he got food from the table. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I said, great. Is when they oh here he come to get food from our table, and you still looking at and now you looking at yeah. and you taking food from the like table. a lion. People knew you were coming to the table mm -hmm. and could not stop you from eating, and you did it for many 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 years. You had longevity doing yeah. it. That's and, the definition of great. And that's what I look at. I think you know I hear people now say, 
Well, he played for 14 years. What you expect? What's wrong with that? You don't understand. So it then. if I play for 14 years at that position, right? I'm either crazy, tough as hell. I'm just a bad damn man. Right. Jerry Rice played 20 years. I don't hear anybody saying he played 20 years and he took a long time. A lot of these court. Tom Brady is now going to his 20, 23rd year, and look how many yards he have. So longevity means that you can hang around for a long time beyond what the average is supposed to do. And still do the it average at that is 2.3 level. years. Yeah. You know, guys normally come in and they return. The thing of it is, I was a quarterback in high school and college. I get drafted as a kick returner, and they put me at kick return. Coach Gibbs, and, and when I got to, to Philly with Andy and North Turner, all these people felt that I was vital at that position. So they let me play the other position, but they wanted to protect me for kick, run, kick return the perfect yard. But how many people at 30, 32, can run faster than they did at not, 22. Not in 1990, I came into the league, I ran 441. Okay? I was 198 pounds. In 2000, when I went to Philly, I was 221. I ran 441. So now I got a little bit more weight coming with the same speed, so I got a lot more uh, momentum coming at you. You try yeah. to come and try to tackle me then, I was bringing it. But the whole thing is people act as if because you played long is the reason that you got the yards. No, because I dedicated myself to the craft. You know, I worked my butt off, and I didn't play the game to dance. Yeah. I don't like dancing in the club. I played the game to be physical. I tried to intimidate people. And I don't know if that's, you know, that wasn't sexy enough for him, I guess. All right, that that concludes my ad for <laughs> for B. Mitch getting into the Hall of Fame. Shame on you if y'all do not at some point realize that this man is long overdue to get that bus in Canton. 